Welcome on in everyone. I am going to cover the lunar eclipse in Scorpio in this video. We got a lot to talk about. This is going to be, you know, Scorpio deep, right? It's just, it's not only lunar energy in a very deep sign, but we're talking about an eclipse and we just had an eclipse. So it's very, very cathartic energy. Um, could be very disruptive. Let me say that. Um, Opening up this video, we're going to discuss some general energies, and then I'm going to talk about themes that we're likely to see during this time. Those of you who want to hang on and go a little bit deeper, we're going to talk about the aspects that are coming up with the um, the, the moon during this time. Uh, and then also I'll close out with a sneak peek into what we're coming into on the 19th with the new moon in Taurus. So thanks for joining and staying with me as long as you can. All right, let's talk about this. You know, I think that this is going to be a very uh, deeply personal energy hitting all of us where it could bring up a lot of sensitivities. So, you know, buckle up and let me say just a little preparation here. <laughs> I wouldn't pack your schedule around the 5th, okay? Uh, this for a lot of people, even if you're not deeply impacted, although I'm going to say that Scorpio deeply impacted, the opposite sign of Scorpio, which would be Taurus, and the other fixed signs, Aquarius, Libra, probably most uh, impacted by this energy. Um, but collectively, it's a big hit regardless of your sign but let's say that you're one of the lucky ones <laughs> who's just like i don't know what the big deal is i'm doing just great okay well just keep in mind that not everybody else is okay and this is just another reason why don't expect a lot around the fifth because if not you maybe other people are needing to pull back and do a little bit of uh, withdrawal and you know get some privacy so that they could do Use some processing of emotions, maybe purging, maybe releasing um, emotional issues that for some people could be intense, okay? Um, this is also even, let's say if you're not dealing with a lot of intense emotions during this time, it's a highly psychic energy. So it's a good time to pull back, even if you're, you got a great drama free zone, you know, lucky you. <laughs> um, still a good time to pull back and really tune into what's getting downloaded in the energies and you know yeah for some of you you know it is a time where you use a psychic energy to tune into what pain in your life is communicating to you at this time you know we live in a culture that just acts like pain is the worst thing and we try to mask it and we try to hide it and we try to you know self-medicate and all of that and sometimes there's wisdom in pain you know it's telling us something if we don't run from it and try to you know cover it up if we just tune into the pain and we feel it sometimes it's communicating really important information to us about what needs to change in our lives and be transformed uh, in order for us to come into a more empowering position. And I think that's, you know, the gift of this energy as unpleasant as it may be for some people. And it will be like, to get ready for that, okay? The, the gift curse here is that it's helping all of us transcend trauma in our lives and let go of emotional baggage um, that we've been carrying, some of us not totally conscious of it, okay? Some of us, yes, we are. It's going to be right in your face. It, it's put in our face so that we look at, aha, this is what's been hindering me. This is what I need to like drop. So it's no longer dragging me down in life and, and hindering my progress. So for example, I think this is a big issue for a lot of people right now, myself included, um, looking at where have I been seeking um, support from the wrong sources because surprise surprise I'm not getting my needs met right whether we could shoulda coulda woulda all day long you know or blaming or envy or jealousy or possessiveness or deservingness or whatever okay but at the end of the day 
fair or not fair, like it or hate it, you know, looking at the raw, brutal truth of it, um, the sober truth of it is like, this is not feeding me. I'm going to have to let this go so that I can move on to what is. And some of us have been maybe connecting with people who have not taken our best interests as their own. We can maybe wallow for a time in a season and that wasn't fair. Um, I really trusted that person. They betrayed my trust. I mean, the blaming, I deserve this, you know, this type of thing. But at the end of the day, you kind of got to <laughs> knock the dust off your feet, get up and move on with it and go in the direction where you, your interests are going to be taken um, as someone else's own. Okay. Um, is this a time to really go out and do something about these feelings or these realizations? I don't think so. Um, because again, you know, with us being knee deep, well, more like waist deep in eclipse, mm, I, yeah, I'm, we're really deep in eclipse, eclipse season, okay? We're really deep in it. Okay, so with us being so deep, deep in eclipse season, um, this is not really a time to do stuff because we're in a lot of flux still. There's things being eclipsed in from, you know, two weeks ago with that uh, new moon and, and uh, that solar eclipse in Aries and things being eclipsed out with a solar eclipse, lunar eclipse. Thank you, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Okay, this lunar eclipse in um, Scorpio. God, it's, you know, I got to find my words, you know, I really do. They're there. I know what I'm talking about, but I'm starting to trip all over it. Anyhow, rather than taking action at the time of this lunar eclipse, it will be better to kind of lay low, sit with your feelings, be present, stay present, and observe what's going on around you what's happening with all things aquarius because yeah scorpio is ruled by pluto pluto is now at zero degrees in aquarius um this is really observing things having to do with you know humanity relationships friend groups um, maybe for some of you colleagues um Maybe some of you, the idealism, the wish fulfillment, it just depends on where it's hitting your chart, what's really being triggered and highlighted. Um, some of you on social media, like just step back and again, observe, take a dial tone of what's going on. But I would encourage everyone, including myself, resist the urge to control outcomes or control a situation and beware of other people who are getting sucked into maybe that that desire to do that, okay? The higher purpose of this energy would be to drop the baggage um, so you can travel lighter in the direction of what you now know is supporting you and empowering your growth. And it's interesting, as I was like doing the notes, taking my little notes for this video, uh, there was a song that came up um, probably most of y'all won't appreciate it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Aquarian weird music that I listened to, you know, from the eighties, Gen X, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll put the link down below in the comments, uh, for the video, for those of you who want to watch it, but for many of you, it's not going to be your musical style or taste. So I'm probably going to copy paste the lyrics for it. So that's the main thing is the lyrics. Okay. It's home by Depeche Mode. And what he is talking about, it's really a message of seeing where you belong by first being shown where you don't, okay? Um, like a, it's kind of a this ain't it message, therefore now we know what it is, all right? And the video that I'm gonna put up, um, for those of you, of you that are watching, it's as I was listening to it, I was like, oh, this is so Scorpio. <laughs> this is, it's like dark, it's deep, it's intense, you know? Um, the lighting, the the tone, the everything, okay? Uh, so for some of you that will resonate, I think for most of you it won't, but I'm gonna say the main gist of it is to read those lyrics because that came to me while I was making the notes and I really wanna share that with you. But yes, I'm a diehard Depeche Mode fan from the 80s, <laughs> can't help it. All right, moving on, um, about timing. I think the best time to take action would be around the 15th to the 20th-ish, okay? That's when these lunar energies will wane. 
they'll be waning and up until that point we're dealing with mars squaring jupiter which again it's like <laughs> very shifty energy and that's going to make it really hard for you to get expansion to get change it's a very challenging energy there with mars squaring jupiter i'll talk more about that in a moment when we get into the aspects but you know around that time frame we're going to have the new moon in taurus on the 19th and so um, that's going to be a good time for solid new starts and if you hang with me to the end of this video i'm going to give you a sneak peek into that energy and what we can expect around that time the main thing is this is super faded energy right now and that's pushing us to purge and set aside things that need to be set aside that are maybe hindering us holding us back disempowering us and you know you might have some attachments to these things i'm not saying it's going to be easy i'm hearing toxic release okay as i'm just in getting in my flow with you guys, all right? So it, it's time to, painful as it is, let some things go because it's almost like, what well, do you want to stay and cling on to this um, and not be able to get moved forward? Do you want to stay in the pain or do you want to transcend it and, you know, transcend it? Maybe a disempowering situation where, yeah, it might not be what you wanted, but it's what you needed to get where you need to go. This lunar energy could bring about a lot of heightened inner emotional tension, maybe some turmoil coming up um, with emotional sensitivities being, you know, raised to the surface for release. Uh, some people, you know, that's going to be just watch out. It could be some drama coming from people. Um, and hopefully it's cathartic. Okay. Hopefully, um, People are not overcome by these overwhelming feelings that I think some, right, not everybody, um, and it might be more of a private inner thing. It might not be an outward display of drama, but more of an inward uh, feeling overwhelmed from within about heavy matters in your life, karma, okay? Some of you, spiritual warfare, you know, we're talking about Scorpio, we're talking about the underworld, okay? Um, trauma in life that might not be necessarily specific to the here and now but cumulative over your lifetime it will express in different ways for different people so again as i said before this is a good time around the fifth to withdraw and release any kind of pent-up emotions and try to consider how can you constructively transmute this pain into power um, with the psychic energy, trust your gut um, because, you know, this this amped up psychic energy is really there to equip you in doing that. Um, but yeah, this might involve releasing things having to do with toxicity, losses, shadow work, sweet Jesus. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I'm feeling led to tell some of you if you have never gotten one of my healing readings. Um, it's not cheap because it's a two hour long, um, but I do have payment plans so you could pay it out um, in four smaller installments, okay? Um, but some of you, you know, you haven't done the shadow work uh, and you need to, some of you, I have clients who have come back to do like a checkup or a tune-up. Um, they did, they got the healing reading, but they're like, oh, can we, can we like do a check-in and a tune-up on where I'm at with this right now? So reach out to me if you feel like this is a good time to help with that so you can be constructive with these energies because i'm getting for some of you intuitively this is going to be like yeah tear down to rebuild and the rebuild is coming around the 19th with that new moon on taurus so but rebuild what you're being shown you're being shown okay this is a time of really taking it in and observing from a quiet space and tuning into your gut so that you are clear by the 19th around that time as to what is supporting a you and giving you security and stability from which you can build, okay? Um, but this time of catharsis is possibly pushing you to face some fears in your life. And like I said, dealing with spiritual warfare in your life, uh, I'm not looking forward to it. I got a Taurus rising, so <laughs> that's opposite of Scorpio. Um, you know, and I've got my Mars in the eighth house in my natal chart, so. <laughs> Uh, you know, everybody's got their own astrology that they need to be aware of. But yeah, that's that's a lifetime of spiritual warfare. If y'all don't know what Mars in the eighth house is, Mars in Capricorn in the eighth house. So, yeah. Um, anyway, 
some of you, this is going to be fears about, you know, getting out of the matrix. And as we're all coming into this awakening because of the last year and a half of the South Node in uh, Scorpio and us having to release things having to do with secrets, um, hidden matters, um, power dynamics that are maybe not healthy, um, loss of life, loss of income, um, you know, who took my money? Where's the beef? You know, <laughs> um, these type of things, um, we have got to face our fears about uh, losses, okay? Or not having things that maybe uh, we had banked on, we had hoped for, we had believed in, okay? Um, and, and as you awaken to the reality, um, as the veil has gotten lifted, um, and you're seeing the man behind the curtain, so to speak, um, what are your fears of um, these people, what they have been doing with control, what they have doing with power, or you, what it fears about you having to take personal responsibility, you having to step into more of an empowered position with your life. I'll talk more about that in a moment as we go, okay? But this is also for some of you about living your soul's calling. Um, and being on purpose with your life. But, oh, gee, what happens if this matrix doesn't support that? You know? What happens if you have lack of support doing that from the economy, uh, from your family, from your friends, and they're telling you, no, just go get a job. Go. I don't know why you don't just take any kind of job like everybody else. I mean, it's good enough for us. So... Why do you need to be going doing this weird thing over here? <laughs> I mean, nobody's going to pay. That's not going to pay your bills or, you know, this type of thing. Um, uh, you know, if it's not your message, don't take it. But I'm just saying, you know, these are having to confront issues. Uh, regardless of money, it could be emotional support issues. What if nobody supports you in doing what you feel is your rightful path? Um, what if you feel that people are actively and collectively opposing and oppressing you? Um, f facing fears of powerlessness and, you know, again, what you want versus what you need, um, or this is not the way I wanted my needs to be met, you know, like, okay, so I found the way to get the support that I need to do what I feel I should be doing in my life. However, the people that I hoped would be with me for this, the people that I had, had hoped or believed would support me in doing this, it didn't come together and that's painful. Let's talk about some themes of this lunar energy, which I have somewhat touched on already, uh, but I wanna go a little deeper. You know, I've already been seeing envy, jealousy, unhealthy comparisons. Uh, and, and it surprised me, some of the people that I've heard it come out of, and I think it's because you know, we're dealing with um, with Uranus and Taurus, a lot of shifting of values and priorities and all of that. You know, we've been dealing with that for a while now and we'll have a couple more years of it. People maybe no, no longer feeling valued because people have, they're re-evaluating what do I value? And there's just so much instability going on with the economy and it, there's a lot of flux going on with values and giving value or receiving value. And so I don't know when I see people doing this because they feel like they're not being valued or um, they're not being appreciated, values not being returned to them. Um, they do get into, and I've even caught myself a little bit getting into the unhealthy comparisons, um, looking at other people, well, why are they getting ahead and I'm not? Um, or why are they getting the support and I'm not? And I, like I've said, I've seen very well-respected people doing this online and it's like, whoa, what is happening here? So I want to remind all of you, and I have to remind myself, you know, it takes all kinds to win all kinds. And um, we can only be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And anything else is, is a counterfeit, okay? Um, right now, a lot of people's self-worth issues are getting triggered. Like I said, we're not feeling valued. Um, and, it, and it might not necessarily be that you're not valued, especially in an online community, there's stuff going on behind closed doors, especially on this platform. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So you almost have to take a detached approach to this and realize that maybe uh, it's not your fault 
yeah, it's maybe your problem, but it's not your fault, okay? And try not to get defensive about it during this time. Okay, I think another theme coming up are, um, is issues of powerlessness, power dynamics and relationships, commitment issues, um, possessiveness, or concern about possessions. We're having, I think, to collectively ask ourselves if we are in mutually supportive and mutually empowering unions. And sadly, I think the answer to that question for a lot of people is no. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, I wish I could be, you know, but uh, again, I go back to uh, South Node in Scorpio, North Node in Taurus. A lot of people have had to find their own feet the last year and a half. And the faulty foundations that some of these relationships have been built upon have been exposed. It's been revealed that I, you really can't trust this. This is not really going to empower you. Um, and then you're having to look at how about you as an individual? Are you well positioned? Are you well supported? If not, why? Have you been exploited? Have you resorted to exploiting others? Um, that's been exposed with these nodes um, and feeling the pressure to release the toxicity in relationships, in family, sweet Jesus, yes. I think another thing that's coming up during this time has to do with issues of exploitation, mistrust, long repressed um, secrets, and maybe even suspicions, which may be valid, okay? Um, this would have to do with grief, loss, collectively, okay? Uh, maybe we're talking about death taxes as well um, from the last one and a half years and what has been going on since 2020. You know what I'm talking about, right? We're in code here because this is not a free speech platform. Let's keep it moving before I get... You know, <laughs> all right. So the question is that it's bringing up is, you know, uh, was I deceived? Did I deceive others? Did I believe these deceivers back in 2020? Did I take the that? Did I take that that permanently alters DNA? Um, what lies am I still believing right now? and maybe lies about serving the established system, which I like to call the matrix. Um, for those of you who haven't seen that movie, you really need to see it. It's my favorite trilogy. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, don't, if you don't fit in, if you don't go along with the herd, the program, um, the establishment, then you're not gonna survive, okay? Right, because if you don't take their, you won't get their jobs. Um, let's let's rewind it even further back prior to 2020 um, telling your kids to go to college so they can get into debt so they can get a job so that they can pay their debt you know to buy a house to get into more debt um, and on and on and on um, basically debt slavery which come to find out unfortunately a lot of these degrees are turning out to be worthless and putting people in debt slavery, okay? So um, what are the NPCs saying now? What are the parrots, the mockingbird media saying now? Are you repeating their lies, uh, right? The don't kill grandma and we're all in this together and trust the science and get your Fauci ouchie and all of that. <laughs> you know, and the, and the Ukraine flags in the, in the bio and oops, come to find out, you know, money laundering going on over there in bio mm, labs. I gotta stop. <laughs> By the way, thanks to those of y'all who gave me the likes on the last video saying you want me to go deeper into politics. Listen, I'm thinking about it, but I'm having to be very calculated and I'm not going to execute this until the new moon in Taurus on the 19th. Okay, I'll have a clear idea around that time. There's a lot of holy shift going on, right? Um, and so I'm going to figure out how I'm going to go about to do, doing it, okay? Because I want to do it. I really do. And I saw the likes. And if you're still like, yeah, do that, then give me a like, please, or a comment. Um, that'll help keep me encouraged. Like, yes, I need to find a way to get that information out there. Um, 
it's, it's just very dicey on this platform, okay? I think I might be able to do it over on Twitter, um, but that's gonna take some doing and I gotta figure my way around that and it'll hopefully get clearer by that new moon on the 19th. But anyway, thank you for the likes. But getting back to this energy, uh, just to close that, that message about, you know, this theme of exploitation, mistrust, um, repressed secrets, um, suspicions, which may be valid, okay? I think over the next six months, we're going to be dealing with more of that. Um, the energy with the eclipses, this particular eclipse is going to be releasing more secrets, investigations, leaked information, having to do with the FBI, the CIA. Okay, another theme that's gonna come up is having to do with seduction, sexuality, psychology, okay? Um, I'm gonna say with the, you know, investigations, the leaked information coming out, will these revelations have to do with sex trafficking? Especially with the United States um, astrology showing that this is coming up in the fifth house, okay, having to do with children. So, by the way, I want to put out another video on United States astrology, okay? Look for that, okay? Look for that. Um, but I think also this might have to do with gender dysphoria. That's been a lot, a lot, a lot in the news, um, maybe connected to autism spectrum disorder. Um, mental illness. There's been a lot of talk about that, and uh, particularly on Twitter, um, where people have more freedom to discuss these things. Is there any kind of connection? Also, shadow sexuality, pedophilia, maps, minor attracted persons, okay? Um, grooming of children, that getting normalized. Um, legally, shockingly, and culturally through the drag shows, drag story time, things like that. So um, I think people are going to be talking more because they're becoming a lot more aware of how um, media, whether it's social media or mainstream media, has been seducing audiences with lies through gaslighting. In fact, I was on Twitter a couple days ago and somebody said, you know, have we ever been gaslit like this before or just people becoming more aware of it? And um, the response in the comments was kind of mixed, you know, it, and some people are like both, you know, it's been going on, but they really ramped it up. And yes, people are becoming more aware um, and also aware of how bots and algorithms are, um, you know, and some shadow banning, you know, things like that, how it's, curating a, a particular perspective that's artificial that's not real right for example you know with the selections i said selections okay <laughs> for a reason we know what we're talking about here um <clears throat> i mean look at arizona what's coming out of arizona right now we don't even have to go back to 2020 and what happened all right but also look at what's happening with the um the trans agenda and people asking why are they pushing so hard? Why is this being rammed down the throats of children, parents, like never before when it actually doesn't represent the majority of the population? Why is a minority, which at best maybe represents 10% of the population, but that's expanding, right? really more like 3%, okay? But nevertheless, why? Why is this getting so much media attention when actually this is not really a priority for the average everyday American or human across the globe, okay? So people are becoming more aware of it. And um, finally, you know, another theme we're seeing is endings. Um, with this closely hitting the south node, again, about releasing, sh shedding, um, is this by choice or is this by force? Um, this release that individually, relationally, collectively we're having to uh, face, again, facing fears of, you know, what if I don't go along with the herd? What if I disagree? What if I lose opportunities because of this? What if this is actually not supporting me and empowering me in my truth? What if I can't trust this? And rightfully so. Um, look at where, by the way, Pluto is um, transiting your natal chart, okay? And that's where you're likely at this time to feel a lot of intensity and push 
to create an exit plan in your life and that's probably where you're meeting a lot of karma some kind of karma um karmic doorway that you're having to walk through to get on the other side of whatever this heaviness is all right so let's talk about the transits and the aspects influencing this lunar energy and i hope you enjoy the video of a thunderstorm in texas <laughs> i thought it was so fitting it's so you know scorpionic deep right uh, but yeah and I, I decided to go off camera for a little bit um, and hopefully you enjoy this view but let's talk about this let's start off with Mars continuing to transit through cancer um, you know I, I mentioned in the last video I put out with the solar eclipse in Aries um, we're dealing with energies having to do with this war on women food insecurities um, and I really feel that this is bringing themes of family and emotional baggage where we're clean to insecurities, like I said, that have maybe hindered progress. Um, but more on a collective level, um, we are seeing passive aggressive behavior coming up. Uh, and I think that people are just hitting their limits with it. I mean, when I go onto Twitter and I'm looking at um, what's happening collectively and what people are talking about out there, you know, we're hearing these topics, you know, of misogyny in a skirt, you know, <laughs> um, and, and this is now coming in addition to a lot of conversations that have been going on and continue to go on about the cost of living crisis and homelessness on the streets. My gosh, I mean, I just tuned in yesterday to a live uh, Twitter spaces where there were probably about three or four hundred people on that one Twitter space discussing what is happening with the homelessness epidemic that you know we are seeing all over America and you know I, I don't know if you've encountered this but I've mentioned it to other people and I've been like have you ever seen anything like this before and I've had a few random people say oh we've always had homelessness <laughs> Um, but I'm like, no, but like this, no, we haven't. Um, you know, it's not that homelessness was not happening prior to this transit. I think that it's be that the transit is making people painfully aware of it and the need to address it. Um, you know, like the Twitter spaces yesterday, people were talking about uh, how the homeless people are being preyed upon. Um, these charities are being corrupted. Um, there's misuse, abuse of resources that are not going to our most vulnerable people. And I mean, I, I could go on. It's just not being addressed. And is government supposed to fix this? But oops, what if government is corrupted? Do we just keep throwing more money at this? Or do we need to be doing this at more of a grassroots level, taking the power back? And I think that there's a lot of people, frankly, that are in denial about it. They're not able to connect the dots about you know the homelessness the vax injuries the deaths why can't people see it the connection of it all particularly connecting all the way back to covid this is the post-covid fallout and still a lot of lies going on that everything is okay and being told in the media not to believe your lying eyes and are, again are we parroting this to other people because i heard it on the news or some talking head that i respect or politician that i respect is telling me that they just put a, a program through to, you know, reduce inflation, but, uh, you know, guess what? Tucked in there in the secret fine print, a bunch of money is going to, who knows, Ukraine or whomever. We don't even know anymore where our money is going. It's clearly not going to all these people out on the street. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. You know, I think this energy is kind of showing up with a Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, trying Mars and Cancer. A lot of heavy karma attached to buying into this illusion of what the truth really is having to do with these these issues of food insecurity, homelessness, the war on women. I'll talk more about it in just a moment. But I also want to talk about the sun conjunct Uranus where um, we're having to see what needs to change and what is changing, whether we like it or not. And with the Uranus opposing the moon, Again, another layer of energy in addition to this lunar eclipse, you know, it's it's bringing more drama in. And possibly that's coming through sudden financial shifts, 
sudden shocking revelations or like I said information leaks investigations where people are rebelling about you know the financial system or the power structure and disruption of it being brought about by political and financial scandals that have been leaking out and continue to well probably will continue to over the next six months given this eclipse and it's ushering in an awakening on a global scale for example you know look at what's going on over in italy they have just erupted in a massive protest that have been suppressed by the media like nobody wants to talk about what's going on in Italy I think the only places you could go to hear about it really openly would be Twitter and TikTok so uh, you know people are realizing from all of this how ESG scores are influencing wokeism in corporations and a lot of you haven't heard of ESG it's something I think people are becoming more aware of that they weren't before. Um, you know, you think it's a coincidence that they're all using pride flags during Pride Month. You remember that uh, whenever, you know, Google and I, I don't even want to go down the list. They all changed their logos to the pride flag. And again, you think this is all a coincidence, but no, think again, it's all coordinated and it's financially motivated, it always has been. I mean, even the women's movement, come to find out, has been coordinated. It's, it's not what you thought it was for the reasons that you were told to empower women, to give, to liberate women, yada, yada, yada. No, from the globalist perspective, it was to increase the taxpayer base so we had more people paying into the tax system and also, you get the kids in school sooner in life, and school becomes basically the parent. And you start getting those young minds at an earlier age, shaping, molding them, programming them. Is it no wonder now, no accident, that Gen Z is predominantly left, okay? And that the institutions of higher miseducation are liberal arts colleges. They tell you right in your face, liberal arts, right? I could go on, I digress. But going back to the ESG scores, it's a system being used to usher in cultural Marxism. And I've seen some conversations online, you know, people asking why? Uh, why are they doing this? What is the purpose of, you know, pushing the trans agenda? Gender reassignment surgery on children who are not even of legal age to buy alcohol or vote, but you're going to let them make a life-changing decision that is essentially going to castrate, sterilize these children for life. Um, why, why so much focus on this? We didn't ask for it, okay? <laughs> um, this is not our agenda. This is not the people's agenda. And I, I think it's, frankly, this is my two cents depopulation. And I'm gonna, it's super simple, actually. It, if you go back to all of the programs that have been pushed and promoted all the way back since the women's movement, it all goes back to a depopulation agenda, right? Because when, you, when, you, when you're not really trying to have children because you're aborting them, no offense, or you're at work and you can't take care of them, but you want to prioritize your career and not having a family life. And I'm not judging people for their choices. I'm just saying the end result is you have a decline in population. And you know that could also be associated with what happened in 2020 with the experimental you-know-what. We are now finding a lot of those people are having issues with sterility or stillbirths okay at least that's what they're support they're reporting but going back to the esg scores you know we've got at the root of all of this um larry fink ceo of blackrock and that's where the money is getting filed and a lot of people are waking up to this realization that oh my blackrock owns 90 percent of these corporations and so that's why you're seeing people like Nike decide, let's put a biological man in a sports bra 
and promote it or have Olay or EOS uh, have a man talking about this is going to help with my my beauty regimen my, on my you know face or on uh, my breast yes he really went there and said that or tampax because he's going to have a period did you know that biological men have periods now and can birth children yes yes um, and then you know the whole thing going on with bud light <laughs> And, you know, that whole scandal with them not backing down. Um, by the way, any of you that are into gaslighting, go watch that. Look at that. Read that non-apology apology letter that Bud Light put out. Uh, frankly, it was their, their CEO who come to find out is ex-CIA. This is classic gaslighting on display, people, that you can, you can watch and see for yourself. But it's like, okay, why were you using uh, this biological male to promote products aside from bud that are associated with biological women you know the sports bras the um, makeup and beauty products the hygiene products okay uh, and side note I can't prove it but check out you know the head of Bud Light's marketing team looks a little not exactly biological female to me. Okay, again, why are all of these people that are trans getting installed in so many public positions, though they represent a mere 3% of the population? Do you think it's an accident? It's almost like if you want to get a promotion, a high-profile position, a high-paying, prestigious position in this economy, in this culture you've got to be trans because this is what we're seeing all these trans people increasingly put out and if they're not trans then they're you know they're not straight and and, and it, is it then any coincidence that we are now seeing reports coming out that gen z females are increasingly identifying as bisexual no, I don't think so. I think it's a hidden agenda. Again, with the scorpionic energy, look behind the veil. Connect the dots. <laughs> this energy has also brought about some recent news leaks uh, with U.S. being in war with Russia without congressional approval. And for those of you who don't know the U.S. Constitution, that's unconstitutional. The government is not allowed to declare war without the approval of Congress. Um, otherwise, we have a dictatorship here. And so apparently that's what's happening. That's going on. And these news leaks are coming out showing how money deals are being done behind closed doors. Wars are being fought in covert without approval, which is diverting our nation's wealth to other nations or protecting other nations' borders without protecting our own. So... You know, we're going back to some 1776 themes, which, by the way, if y'all go way back, I believe it was last summer, I put out a six-month United States astrology forecast, um, which is really backing up what I said then, and here we go again, where, you know, these themes of taxation without representation are coming up. People are becoming painfully aware of why are all these millions, billions of dollars going to Ukrainians or people from South America flooding in our borders when we have Americans sleeping on the streets of our own country and we can't even take care of our own people? This is not really about being xenophobic, as the media would like to, to have us believe. This is about, you know, tending to your own flock first. Put the oxygen mask on yourself first, and then maybe you can save some other people. But there's got to be a proper order to things, and that's not being followed. Also, with the Sun and Taurus during this time in loose conjunction with Eris and Aries, there could be a lot of out in the open anger, a lot of truth telling, um, exposing, a lot of exposés going on where, yes, that's bringing about a spotlight on leaders, leadership, um, or people, you know, deciding I'm not going to be a follower anymore, or I'm not following this. I'm not going to let you, you know, lead me off a cliff. And so we're seeing the rise of citizen journalists, like what's going on on Twitter, where 
you know, the mainstream Mockingbird media has lost their badges if they're not going to pay the $8 a month subscription, which has been a tremendous equalizer uh, of voices for citizen journalists. And, you know, the mainstream media is not happy about it. They've had some people defecting the platform and others are like, good riddance, because we don't believe you anyway. I think mistrust of media is now at an all-time high and these are the people who are coming, you know, onto TikTok or Twitter, and they are uploading accounts, raw footage of the violence that has been happening, the transgressions that have been happening by using these iPhones and, you know, uploading it to these um, different platforms that will allow it, like Twitter and TikTok, and that's showing an undeniable reality check which, again, is bringing about this unveiling and um, an unobscuring of the truth. Is that even a word? I don't know. Let's go with it. <laughs> um, Mercury retrograde in Taurus till May 15th, which we are now in, has us reevaluating uh, money matters, money issues, values, stability, security issues. Really has a lot of people questioning, well, what is success? Um, is it that you kept your job during convid is it that you kept your status your reputation but now you lost your life your health because of the jab you know a lot of people are questioning that and looking at what is loss in life what is real loss in life not having the house car friends lifestyle because you pursued your passion your soul's path the leading of spirit though everyone called you a loser for doing so you know these are questions I think a lot of people are asking as we're facing food insecurity issues, uh, things going on with the agricultural industry, big ag, um, more reports coming out of, even in Texas where I live, cows dying um, in addition, a lot of cows, in addition to a string of sudden and unexpected food manufacturing plant fires and explosions, again, connect the dots look behind the veil. This is not a coincidence. Do you really think it's a coincidence? When in history have you ever, ever seen such a thing at this scale? And, and, and then and it is coinciding with things like that New York mayor pushing for vegetarianism. Hey, I'm not against vegetarianism. I'm, I'm kind of vegan myself. But, um, but, but the issue is forcing, right? And this plays right into the energy of, you know, is this by choice or by force? And um, we are seeing more reports coming out of forced vaccination in the works through the food supply. They're building the vaccines into the genetics of crops that are being grown. And now we understand why Bill Gates was buying up so much farmland in 2020 around that time and is now probably the largest landowner in US last I checked um, again connect all these dots he, he you really think he put all that money into agriculture for no reason how are you coping with all of these things this right this matrix false reality of you know get a job get a job get a job versus what is your soul's purpose and so I know Leo King, I think, put out a um, good message around the last eclipse uh, with the Aries solar eclipse. Please go watch it. Um, please go watch it where he talks more about this. Um, also, I got a little bit of um, Pam Gregory was talking about the Wall Street crashing. And we are at this time in a lot of energy um, that is similar to the stock market crash of the 1920s. And that's kind of a little scary, creepy, right? Is it not? Um, Capricorn, Uranus, Taurus, the nodes, all of that are quite similar to the stock market crash that ushered in the Great Depression, okay? So the question is, with all of these energies, what happens when your money is worthless? What happens when you can't just get a job? Does the job give you worth? 
or do you bring worth to your life's work? Some of us are having to understand that maybe people can't come up with cold hard cash, but they can come up with resources. They can come up with talent. We have to create a different way of looking at what we value. Uranus and Taurus is doing that. If you can no longer look at everything through the lens of cold hard cash, then how else do we base success and values and priorities? And going back to the monetary system, some of you really confused about what to believe because, again, it's almost like the mainstream media is in an alternate reality. I'm sorry, I cannot even talk to people who listen to that because, it, there, and, and you can see it, I think, when you go out in public, either people are just so in their bubble and they're not even paying attention or what they're paying attention to is mainstream media and they're, they're living in a very false a paradigm. They're not really informed and they're not taking in all information and then forming their own opinions about it. They're maybe just parroting. They're having trouble because of all of this conflicting information where they're having to look at what's going on here really. Is there exaggeration? Is this sensationalism? Because the media is telling me everything's just fine, everything's looking up. Um, but a reminder, I warned people about the inflation in January 2021. I put a video out about it, and I got people in the comment. Well, most of it was crickets, silence. Nobody said anything. But then I got the comments I did get were people telling me that I was listening to too much fear porn and spreading it. But guess what? Here we are in 2023, and you all know it was the truth. Okay, so how do you personally discern brutal truth from fear? Fear porn. You know, are you dismissive when warned? And I think, you know, for me, what I'm sharing with you is me not wanting you to live in fear, but to step into your power. And I think that's the highest use of all the scorpionic energy. And even with the, you know, North Node and Taurus. By the way, I also want to say that, you know, with this energy of Mercury retrograde and Taurus till May 15th, we are seeing conversations going on amongst even liberals, challenging other liberals, which I think is positive, challenging other liberals on their views. For example, recently there was a debate going on between Pierce Morgan, Bill Maher, or Marr, however you want to pronounce it, and Representative Katie Porter, where they're asking, what is feminism? Is feminism about biological men competing in women's sports? And these men, these liberal men, said to this liberal woman, sounds like patriarchy to me. Is this just misogyny in a skirt? And you have actual feminists uh, like Posey Parker getting attacked by trans women, biological males who are claiming identity as a woman. I'm seeing more and more of that online. And so, you know, yes, it can get aggressive, but, you know, that's not necessarily physically aggressive, maybe verbally aggressive, where there is some sparring going on about what do we believe anymore? What do we value, even in our own camp? With Venus and Gemini as well, um, I do want to caution y'all about duplicitous double talk, okay? It might sound good, uh, right, like the inflation reduction bill. But is that what's really going on? Are they actually reducing the inflation or are they just increasing the debt? It's kind of like the Patriot Act. It sounds really good. But, you know, read a little further, further and come to find out they just should have maybe pos possibly renamed it more accurately the Non-Patriot Act or the Violate Your Fourth Amendment Act. <laughs> it's a, you know, welcome to George Orwell's 1984, where war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. So, um, yeah, be aware of what sounds good on the surface um, may not be look behind the veil. I know I keep saying it repeatedly, but it, it's, a, it's an overarching energy. And, you know, these mutable energies paired with the Uranus themes are making for situations where the script could get flipped pretty fast and out of nowhere, like you didn't even see it coming. Um, with the Jupiter squaring Pluto and Aquarius, and that's, you know, the ruler of Uranus. Well, these are power issues and power dynamics being put under a magnifying glass. And that's really expanding a sense of or feeling of intensity on matters having to do with social decay, 
versus revival, right? Post-COVID issues, are we going to have the reset? Are we going to have AI um, doing the bidding for globalists affecting individual freedom? Um, are we going to have decentralization or are we going to have centralization, right, with our monetary system, say, for example, the CBDCs versus the Bitcoins? This is also bringing up issues of your inner authority and, and autonomy, again, that maybe we took for granted prior to COVID, um, where people complied, they deferred their own personal responsibility to the authorities. And now post COVID, people are realizing, no, I do not need to comply. I do not need to consent. I need to take authority and dominion over my own life, my own body, my own health care decisions. This is also affecting, you know, um, your lifestyle, right? So having more of an independent lifestyle, and again, take it however it applies, whether, you know, you want to be trans and you want the right to be trans or you want the right to not have to listen to trans agenda 24 <laughs> seven, you, know, you would like the right to not, you know, have to compete in sports and compete for jobs and uh, compete for whatever, uh, compete for a shower stall or a bathroom stall with a biological male. This is really bringing up these discussions. So, um, be informed, I think, is the most powerful thing. It reminds me of one of my favorite Bible scriptures, my people perish for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. I think that's really key. That's what's going to save us here is knowing the truth and walking in it. Um, but at this point, I do want to say at this point, anyone who is drinking the Kool-Aid either likes the Kool-Aid or owns stock in it, they work for and profit from the system, okay? But nevertheless, integrity issues are getting exposed. And I think the problem is that with freedom comes responsibility. And a lot of people don't want responsibility. That's the truth of it. That is why people defer to authorities and they want to elect and give their tax dollars away to people, you know, vote for more taxes to have someone else regulate and tell other people what to do with their lives because they don't want personal freedom. I mean, that's, 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 that's a shadow side of this. Okay. And then, like I said, this energy is bringing up a lot of shadow issues. So I think a good use of this energy of Jupiter square and Pluto and Aquarius is, um, grassroots efforts, co-ops of various kinds where humanity is creating parallel economies and systems as alternatives to conventional ones, right? Like rather than going to public school, doing homeschooling, rather than banking globally, you're banking locally. Rather than engaging in big agriculture, you are getting into, you know, a local farmer's market or um, community gardens, okay, or rather than getting into big pharma, you're getting into naturopathic medicines. You are seeking out people like um, holistic dentists, naturopathic doctors, midwives, people who do uh, chiropractic work or acupuncture, things like that. Um, and in terms of living spaces, communal living, house sharing, land sharing, not really talking about socialism here, but because that would serve the interest of taking property rights away from the individual. I'm talking about something that empowers individual liberty and protects individuals' rights for land ownership, which is key to having middle class. And people don't seem to know that. They don't understand that. That socialism, by the way, is soft communism. And socialism works to erode individual liberties, individual land ownership, and yes, ultimately the middle class. All right, and Pluto squaring the north and south nodes during this time. Um, you know, I think bringing up issues of taxation, as I mentioned before, we've been seeing 
talks with like Lindsey Graham talking about the social security system and this is alongside protests in France about the same policies and there's been a media blackout over there um, worldwide agenda by the way to steal from and subjugate the population and I gotta say this it's something that Gregory Manorino would say all the time. If you haven't seen his channel, he talks about the stock market and the economy and all that. Check him out, Gregory Manorino. But he said, and I never forgot it, it really planted a seed in my mind. Where did the money go? It doesn't just disappear, folks. Who has it? <laughs> Where did the money go? Okay. And the answer to the question is BlackRock, Vanguard. These are the shadow government, the deep state funding. It's time for us to make these household names like they don't want you to. Um, that's really going to empower knowing that, okay? Humanity knowing that and rising to that challenge is going to help us to take our power back. But yes, right now we are being challenged by issues of shared resources in the form of taxation and families and, as I mentioned before, entering into a death-rebirth cycle on matters of resourcefulness similar to that of 1776, similar to that of the 1920s stock market that ushered in the Great Depression, what values are being destroyed right now? The traditional family? What kind of revival or reconstruction is this making way for? The WEF's brand or humanity's brand? We have to decide to step into our power, or are we going to continue to delegate it over to others because we don't want to fail? We're afraid of failure. We're, a failure. We're afraid of not being supported by others. We're afraid of what happens if we defect from this matrix, this system, this establishment. We got to face it. And with Saturn, Neptune, and Pisces trining Mars and Cancer during this time, I will say on the positive, it's an energy that's going to help with forgiveness and relationships, especially family, especially feminine energy. But yes, proceed with caution about how you're going to get expansion on these issues because as I mentioned before, Mars squaring Jupiter is making it a bit difficult in addition to all the energy that's in flux right now from eclipse season. Um... You know, but again, beware of what's going on in the media, uh, lying about the attack that is currently happening on family, food, by what? Maybe smoothing it over, right? And that fake non-apology, apology letter, right, that we saw from Bud Light. It looked nice, but there was actually, look at it closely, there's no apology. Be aware of that. And this is really kind of metaphoric, not just on a collective level, it's just even on an interpersonal level. People may be coming back, and, it, and it, are they actually sorry, or are they just trying to smooth it over? Is there actually any change happening? Be aware of that. Be aware of spiritual bypassing as well going on in the New Age community. Even in Christian advice, I'm sorry. You know, people that are like getting into this kind of hippy-dippy stuff about, oh, well, you know, just pray and, and, and meditate and take deep breaths and I'm sorry, could you say that to a woman who's getting attacked by a mob? I just saw that in Chicago. They had a woman attacked by a mob in broad daylight. Should she just drop into this and make space for this? Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff where people need to get real. And Scorpio, Scorpio can be brutal in that respect where it's like you got to look at this darkness. We can't fluff it up and i just want to say as a side note you know on that 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 public issue that i mentioned in the news with that woman getting attacked by the mob in chicago i mean you kind of saw this this uh you know this going on this energy that i'm talking about um that i mentioned earlier with people trying to smooth things over artificially like after that happened um 
there were several incidents in Chicago, not just one, where finally the mayor came on and said, let's not demonize these youths. I remember I was talking, which I found to be a very interesting word, considering that, you know, Scorpio deals with the underworld, right? Let's not demonize these youths. Um, and I thought to myself, and I know a lot of people did online, you know, what, what is this going on here? Do we no longer as a culture value correction, discipline, consequences? And what is the collective karma if we don't? And I think the answer is that these adults who are in charge right now, right, these mayor in Chicago and people like that in leadership, they're going to find themselves eventually, the karma is, they will find themselves under the care of these kids in their elder years. And woe to them. Um, we're in this mess due to passivity. We don't need any more of it. Again, with Mars and Cancer, it is bringing about this kind of passive aggressive dynamic going on where you know you're seeing people downplaying very serious matters uh, people getting shot there being mobs of youth violence um, one lone woman just trying to get into her apartment um, being attacked by a mob and i can't even say uh, let's not even get into the racial dynamic here because i could very quickly be accused of the token R word, okay, because of the programming that's going on in the media, that's a knee-jerk reaction. Oh, you're a, you, you can fill in the blank. I don't even have to say it all. Y'all know what it is if you're American. But anyway, this, this kind of, let's not demonize the youth and the, you know, the spiritual community. Take a deep breath and step back. Well, you know, it sounds nice. Under the surface of it, there's anger that is seething. So I don't, I don't think that passivity is the answer. Um, my two cents, for whatever it's worth, is let the dumb decimate the dumb. I'm sorry to say it like that, kind of rude, but you know, I think unfortunately the weakest of our society's members, psychologically speaking, are going to be the first to go. And we saw that in Chicago with the, um, and also LA as well with teens writing and adults excusing, don't demonize these youth, what for arguably demonic behavior, their shadow side coming out, um, the dark side of humanity coming out. And, you know, the karma is that good people are going to leave that area, by the way. Um, you saw that uh, on the news, Walmart closures, loss of jobs, loss of access to resources, along with loss of the tax base, and this is bringing about societal decay. It's just continuing and accelerating the societal decay. And worse, um, these supposed youths will be taking care of the elders in old age. Um, that's the karma of this. So um, I, I think, you know, my advice is don't stand in the way. Don't stand in the presence of these people. Don't get caught in the crossfire. If you can't get out of these areas, get out. Um, I've been seeing too much of this going on um, videos of getting uploaded of like an elderly woman beaten on, you know, a bus or at a New York subway station. And people standing by filming, offering no aid. It's a sign of a sick society. And furthermore, criminals getting let off the hook by Soros DA corruption. Um, while at the same time, you know, ironically obsessed with indicting Trump, uh, you know, this is going on even in Texas where I'm at, which is a red state, but in blue ruled Austin, you know, they've thrown the rule book at, you know, people trying to exercise self-defense, but not at criminals. And, you know, my two cents on this is they, these areas that are under Soros funding with the DAs, district attorneys, they want you defenseless. They want you powerless. This is why we're seeing so much talk about getting rid of the Second Amendment, okay, disarming this population, this is arguably the demonic unleashed on society. And so, you know, I'm even seeing not, not just the, 
our district attorneys, our legal system being infiltrated by Soros, but we recently had supports of subversive institutions like a China police department in New York City where I and I don't know how true it is, you gotta, you know, do your own research, but they're letting the Chinese government set up their own law enforcement in New York City, according to some reports. I'm not saying it's true or not. You decide for yourself. But again, this brings me back to what I said earlier. We have got to set up parallel economies with Pluto and Aquarius. We've got to bank and buy local, not global. And I think that is how we're going to shift out of these energies and overcome the darker ones. All right, so up next, we've got the new moon in Taurus on the 19th. And as I said before, I'm going to be covering it around that time. So, you know, make sure to tune in because I'll go into a lot more detail then. But just, you know, to summarize what we're coming into, let me say it like this. Um, that's going to be a good time for us to at least set some solid new intentions based on what we value at this time, right? Uh, reprioritization of values um, and who is really aligning with that based on the truth of what we now are coming in to see more clearly from this eclipse season. Um, if you're not actually starting something new around the 19th, um, you may, because you might be dealing with the aftershocks, right, of eclipse season um, and still adjusting from that, okay? But at least by this time, you're going to have a better idea of what you can anchor yourself to uh, for stability's sake and you know, security's sake, and maybe what's going to also strengthen you, you're going to have a better idea, as will a lot of other people, about your priorities that probably have shifted over, you know, the prior month or so with eclipses. But um, just bear in mind, right, because we all like new beginnings, you know, but... Remember, like, this is not going to be an Aries new moon. It's it's not even going to be a fiery moon. It's not going to be a quick start, all right? This is going to be a slow and steady wins the race type of moon, okay? This is going to be about you rebuilding yourself, maybe building more of a solid foundation in your life, but it's kind of a take a time, take your time, let's do it right type of energy um, and build something that can actually endure also keep in mind this new moon coming up on the 19th is yet another energy that is really pushing us to transcend trauma and maybe even some tragedies in life for some of you, okay? Uh, and, the, and the higher purpose is for us to actualize more personal empowerment, mm, but not just for ourselves, it's so we can have more empowering relationships and empower others as well. We'll talk more about that around the 19th. In the meantime, I hope that you have subscribed and hit the bell for notifications so we can stay in touch. Until then, be blessed.